Hey guys, so I wanted to say something about this makeup look. By the way, if you ever want to know what I'm wearing for makeup, I always list all the products in the description box so you can find that information there. But I wanted to say something about this makeup look that I did today. All I have on my eyes in, for eyeshadow is Milani Gilded Eyeshadow Stick in number 6 Lily. This is all I have on my eyes. And in my opinion, these Milani Cream Eyeshadow Sticks are a dupe for the Laura Mercier ones. The formula is almost identical. Um, they are so creamy and blend so beautifully. I just take a makeup brush, an eyeshadow brush, and I just keep loading it up um, onto the stick, or I load the stick onto the brush, I should say, and then just put it where I want it to be, and then I just concentrate it a little bit more in the outer part to make that a little bit deeper, and these are wonderful. I wish they had matte ones, but they're all uh, like a shimmer formula, but they are so beautiful and so easy to work with. And um, yeah, these are really nice. So this was one of the products that I'm working on, you know, trying to use up as much as possible before the end of next month. All right, so today's video, though, is not about makeup. It's going to be about what I'm reading, what I'm watching, and what I'm playing. Every once in a while, I like to do videos that aren't about makeup. And let's start with what I'm reading. I finally finished the Dune series by Frank Herbert. There are six books in the series that he wrote. And the sixth one was Chapter House. And um, I bought this at a used bookstore and got a really good deal on it. I was so surprised to see it there. And um, when I first started this series, I'll be honest with you, when I started the first book, I couldn't get into it. And uh, it's science fiction slash fantasy, if you don't know. Um, I couldn't get into it. And I actually sold or donated the book. I can't remember now. Yeah, donated. I guess I donated the book to my local library because uh, they accept donations and then they sell any donations that they get to raise money to help out the library. And some time went by and I saw the uh, first movie, the remake that they did not too long ago, a couple of years ago now I guess, and I loved it so much I was like, you know what, I gotta, I gotta give that first book a shot and I ended up having to rebuy that book and um, once I got past a certain point in the book something clicked and I was able to get into it and I've read the whole series all six books now he did not finish this series before he died so you're kinda of, kinda of left hanging but not really at the end of the sixth book but these books are some of the best books I've ever read in my life, so I'm so glad I gave it another shot. And um, it combines philosophy, religion, and government, and shows you how all those things are integral to each other and the way that they work. And there are a lot of parallels between what he writes about in these books and the way that our own world works and um, they're just really really amazing and I highly highly recommend them now after I finished that book I thought about reading some of the books that his son wrote because his son f went through all his father's notes and decided to write some more Dune books and I don't know I read the reviews and they said that they're nothing like the books that his father wrote. So I thought, no, I don't think I would like them then. You know, completely different style of writing, which makes sense because he's a different person. 
but I don't have any interest in reading those. I think that the story should end where Frank Herbert left it. So after that, I came across this book at, of all places, Dollar Tree. And what this is, is this is a collection of short stories by C.J. Cherry. And she is a very famous uh, science fiction author who has actually won a Hugo Award. And I had never heard of her, to be honest with you. I had never read anything by her. But these are all her short stories in one book. So this was a $22 book, and I found it at Dollar Tree for $1.25. So this was a real find. And right from the very first story, I was like, wow, this! I really like the way this woman writes. And um, so... I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. I finished the first two stories and I don't, when I sit down and read, I actually don't sit down and read. I get in bed every night and read before I go to sleep and it helps me unwind. But her stories are kind of, there's sort of a, oh gosh, how would you describe them? The two that I've read so far are like, um, suspense action I guess you would say mixed with drama and um, they're not science fiction so far but I have a funny feeling that as I get further into the book they're gonna go more into science fiction because um, she started off writing one type of book early in her career and then she started to shift into other genres as time went on so but I really, really like her. And I have a feeling that when I finish this book, although it's huge, but I have a feeling I'm going to want to read one of her novels after this. There's over 700 pages in this. So this is going to take me a long time to get through because I don't end up reading that much every night because it puts me to sleep. It's how I relax and unwind. So um, it's going to take me a while to get through this. But I can read like one story maybe every two nights. So I read half of a story and then the next night I read the other half. And then the night after that I move on to the next story. But this is really great and I can't believe I found this at Dollar Tree, a twenty-two dollar book. And I love that it's paperback because I don't like hardcovers because when I'm laying in bed reading, it's very hard to hold a hardcover book. Uh that's fine if you're sitting in a chair, but if you're laying down, then a paperback is much easier to hold. Although this is quite heavy because it's over 700 pages. So that's what I'm reading right now. And then what I'm watching. Um, we, j we started watching Oppenheimer, the movie that won all the Academy Awards. Um, we watched two out of the three hours of it yesterday, and we'll probably finish the third hour today because it's really hard to watch a three-hour movie all in one sitting. That's a lot, and um, it's it's excellent. And Killian Murphy, we were already familiar. He he plays Oppenheimer. Um, we were already familiar with his work because he was the star of the TV show Peaky Blinders, and we watched that already. Um, so I already was familiar with him, and he totally deserves the Best Actor Award. He is such a good actor. I've admired his work for a very long time. And if you don't know what that movie is about, he was the inventor of the atomic bomb. And it takes you back in history and plays out his life and how this all came about. And some of the people that he was interacting with are people that you would be familiar with, that you would know who they were, like Einstein. And it's really interesting. And um, so, yeah, we'll probably finish watching that today. And then... Um, I've also been watching some TV shows, and Oppenheimer is on Peacock, and we get Peacock for free 
with our Flex device, which is a streaming device that we get from Comcast. And um, the TV shows that I've been watching, I've been taking out DVDs from the library because you can't have all the streaming services because it would cost you a fortune. So we're actually not paying for any streaming services right now because we get Peacock for free, like I said. So I started thinking about TV shows that I used to love years ago. And so I took out a couple of movies um, that I had already seen before that I wanted to see again, like the newest Matrix movie, Matrix Revolu uh, Resolutions. So we watched that. And then I took out the uh, first Dune movie. The second one is at theaters right now and I think just came out on DVD. So I put myself on the list to, to get that because but when things are brand, brand new, you can't get them at the library right away. You have to wait. And um, so I'm in no hurry, but I, I would, I'm really looking forward to seeing that because I loved the first one. So I thought, okay, in the meantime, while I'm waiting for the second Dune movie to come up on the list, um, what do I want to see? So I started thinking about TV shows that I used to love when I was younger and I used to love animation and I very rarely watch it anymore and so I took out um, season one of Adventure Time because man I used to love that show that is such a great show if you've never seen it if you like animation it is a kids show but it's for older kids and there's a lot of jokes in there that I don't think that kids would even understand. It would just go over their head. Kind of like how they do that with the Simpsons, for example. They throw in a lot of stuff because they know that a lot of adults watch that show. Um, so I had gotten an Adventure Time video that had like random episodes on it and I watched that and I was like, wow, I forgot how much I love this show, so I'm going to start at the very beginning. So I got the complete first season the other day, and I'm uh, starting to watch that. But also, I wanted something really, really light and positive. And I had seen an episode of Bluey, which is for real young children. But that is the sweetest show. Um, it's an Australian based show about this family of dogs and it's just so cute. If you want something really light, something that you can watch with your kids or your grandkids and not worry about there being anything um, objectionable in there, it's, it's really a nice show. So I got season one of that from the library and I'm watching that. But I'm also watching Gravity Falls. Now, I have another streaming device besides my Flex. I have a Roku. And if you have a Roku, add Disney Now, the app Disney Now, to your Roku. And there are a ton of animated shows on there that you can watch for free. And one of them is Gravity Falls. So I've started watching that. And I'm starting at the beginning. And, uh, that is a really great show. It's about a couple of kids that go to live with their uncle and some strange supernatural type things happen while they're there. And the kids are very brave and can seem to handle any situation that they come across. But it's a really good show. And that show, age-wise, is kind of in between, I would say, Bluey and Adventure Time. Bluey is for real young kids. Gravity Falls is maybe for kids that are a little bit older. And then Adventure Time is probably for kids that are even older than that. So I like all three of these shows and I'm sort of sporadically watching them all simultaneously. And watching movies in between. 
And then the next thing I want to talk about is video games. I play Animal Crossing. I have played Animal Crossing almost every day for years now. And my favorite part of Animal Crossing is the very beginning of the game. So what happens is I start an island. I go through all the tasks that they make you do at the beginning. And then I get all the things on my island that you would want to have. And then I start to kind of change things around. And then normally what I do is I restart the game after a certain amount of time. Well, right now, my island is called Spring because I started it right before spring started. My last island was called Winter because I started it right as winter started. But I don't think I want to restart my Spring Island ever because I've got some villagers on this island that I have always wanted. And I don't really like to buy amiibo cards because they can be quite expensive. I have a collection of amiibo cards. And if you have amiibo cards, you can bring that villager to your island anytime you want. But um, if you buy amiibo cards, a lot of times you just have to take what you get in the packages. And if you specifically buy a particular villager, it can be kind of pricey if you buy the authentic cards. Um, but the villager that I have that I don't really want to give up, which makes me want to keep this island forever, is Dobie. I love, love Dobie. He's a cranky, but I don't know, there's something about him. Because I met him for the first time when I was playing the um, Happy Home Paradise uh, add-on game that you can get where you're designing houses. I met him on that island, and I was like, oh, I really like him. And I knew he was rare, but what happened was, um, I don't know if he came to my campsite or if I found him on a mystery island when, when somebody left, but I, I really love him. So I don't think I want to get rid of this island. Plus, I just got anchovy today. He came to the um, campsite. So I invited him to come, but now I have three lazies. So, um, yeah, three lazies is too many. So if one of my other lazies asks to leave, um, hopefully it's not Bones because I don't have his amiibo card either. So I don't have Bones or Anchovy's amiibo cards. So I would like to keep them both. Um, so the lazy that I do have their amiibo card, which is Pudge, um, if he asks to leave, I'll just tell him, go ahead, because, yeah, three lazies, three of any personality is too many. I don't like it, because then you start getting a lot of repeat dialogue. Although, a lot of people don't know this, but there are actually two subtypes within each villager type. There's a type A and a type B. And uh, if you want to know more about this, you can always look it up for yourself, but it's pretty interesting so each personality of villager has a subtype. So ideally, if you're going to have two of a certain type of villager, you would want to have an A and a B. And off the top of my head, I don't know what uh, Dobie's subtype is, subtype is, but I really like that type of cranky. So anyways... Um, that's what I'm reading, what I'm streaming, what I'm watching on DVDs, and that's what's going on with my Animal Crossing Island. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.